The following morning we woke up with a wet tent. We packed up our gear and started our day early. Good morning guys. So today is Sunday. Uh, we did not actually find a place to stay in last night. Uh, we did do a little bit of shopping at Fred Meyer, asked around and said it's pretty much okay to uh, boondock or spend the night at the parking lot. So that's what we did. Uh, we just woke up and like two miles uh, up the road was our very first stop. All right, today we're starting at um, Samuel H. Boardman uh, Scenic Corridor. Right now we've stopped right here at Twin Rock. Kind of similar to like the Waterfall Corridor. We have multiple stops before we complete Samuel H. Boardman. The Scenic Corridor has tons and tons of spots. We won't be able to stop at all of them, but uh, uh, any quick one we probably will. This is Wells Head Viewpoint. Wells Head Beach is a sandy, wide beach. It is also one of the longer beaches along the Oregon coast. The location was given its name because of the whale spout that can be spotted just offshore. Just a few minutes up the road, we made it to our next stop. Natural Bridges Viewpoint is a necessary stop if you are traveling through the Samuel H. Boardman Scenic Corridor. Within 200 feet of the Highway 101, visitors will be able to witness one of nature's phenomena, natural sea arches. Erosion from winds and waves grind down the rocks and they form these beautiful features. The natural arches are formed from cracks and crevices weakening and cracking off to form notches. These notches grow into sea caves on the cliffs. Our next stop is Arch Rock on the trail. Let's see if it's as impressive as people say. As we continued on, we made it to our next stop. Arch Rock is a massive natural arch standing alone in the Pacific Ocean. Many picnic tables shaded under the coastal forest sit nearby for anyone looking to enjoy a pleasant picnic along the southern Oregon coast. A small loop trail winds around the cliff edge, providing awesome views of the coast and of Arch Rock. By this point, we are about halfway through the journey and it was time to wash some clothes. This was indeed part of our journey. We are in Gold Beach, um, Oregon. And when you are taking a trip like this, you cannot go the whole way with clean clothes. So we actually did plan a uh, laundry stop here along the coast. And so we've made it to this point. Time to wash some clothes before we continue on. Hello. Washing clothes in the laundromat brings back so many memories when my mother used to do it and we would go with her as kids. So it's kind of nostalgic here for a moment. Our next stop was the Gold Beach Visitor Center. We did backtrack just about a mile or so. It was a quick stop where we got some good information about the Oregon coast. The Visitor Center would go on to share with us some new stops to consider. Hi, Captain Mateo. After having visited the Gold Beach Visitor Center, uh, we were recommended to stop at the Prehistoric Gardens. Mateo loves dinosaurs. Um, and that's the great thing about uh, just road trips that you're able to stop at different areas uh, and just explore. This was not on the plan at all or on the trip, but we are excited to stop and we know Mateo will love it. Even though this was not part of our itinerary, we decided we had enough time to make a stop. 17 miles up the coast, we made it to the gardens. The Prehistoric Gardens is a roadside attraction located on the Oregon Highway 101. Founded in 1955 in Port Orford, the gardens feature 23 life-size sculptures of dinosaurs set among the lush foliage of the area's temperate rainforest. The gardens are the work of amateur paleontologist E.V. Nelson. The site is run by Nelson's granddaughter. It looks really cool. It's so good. The average rainfall is between 6 and 10 feet per year, allowing the vegetation to grow so abundantly.
The 300-year-old forest tour takes you through the Arboretum where you learn the history of plant life from prehistoric algae to present-day redwoods. Y'all are seeing a stegosaurus in the flesh. Yes. Yeah. You happy? Dinosaurs! Built in 1870, Cape Blanco Lighthouse is the oldest standing lighthouse on the Oregon coast. All right, so this will be our second lighthouse in the tour, but it's our first lighthouse in Oregon. Um, maybe the first of several that we'll be seeing on this trip. Cape Blanco Lighthouse. A lot of these places we've been visiting, it's very foggy. So from a distance, you can kind of make out the lighthouse, but we definitely have to make it to the top to be able to see the whole thing. Thank you for this family of four or five kids. The first sister of this family of four or five kids. Yeah. On December 20th, 1870, the lighthouse began operation and began to warn ships away from the reefs and to provide a position fix for navigators. This isolated lighthouse holds at least four Oregon records. It is the oldest continually operating light, the most westerly, it has the highest focal plane above the sea, 256 feet, and Oregon's first women keeper, Maybell Bretherton, signed on in March 1903. We're in the city of Bandon and we're here at Bullard State Beach Park and we're seeing the Coco Lighthouse. Originally named Bandon Light, Coquille River Light was commissioned in 1895. First lit on February 29, 1896, the light guided mariners past the dangerous shifting sandbars into the Coquille River and harbor at Bandon. Alright, so as we're on our way to Umqua Lighthouse, uh, we did see like a little, I don't know if it's a museum or what it is, but uh, some like trains or railroad uh, carts to see and then right next to this fish and chips we've been wanting to eat some seafood. Uh, and this is definitely one of the uh, surprise stops, not on the, not on the list. Uh, so I think it works out perfect, two things we, we were looking to do and uh, we're going to go ahead and check it out. See, you want to see trains? So the museum itself is not open. It's only open Wednesdays and Saturdays from 11 to 4, but we can still see the outside part of it. It's still nice. Ding! Ding! Alright, so we're grabbing our dinner at a nice little restaurant that's uh, shaped like a bone. To our left we have the view of the uh, railroad museum. We don't really know what to compare it to as we don't eat much fish and chips back at home. All we can say is that it definitely hit the spot. Service was great and food came out fast and fresh.
After our delicious dinner, we were off to our next lighthouse. A quick 30 minute drive and we found ourselves by the Umpqua River in Winchester Bay to visit the Umpqua River Lighthouse. All right, this is lighthouse number three of the Oregon Coast Highway and it's Umpqua River Lighthouse. In 1891, they began construction of the lighthouse, but this time not at the mouth of the Umpqua River. They began construction of the new lighthouse in its present location just south of Winchester at the opening of the Winchester Bay. The new lighthouse was completed in 1894. I started a fire. Oh, oh there you go. <laughs> so we're ending our night at the Umpqua Lighthouse State Park. Uh, we were able to get a campsite. This is our second time camping in Oregon. Um, the weather is not as cold as the first night. Our tent is up, the fire's going, our very first fire. Uh, ever and uh, props to my wife there for starting the fire and uh, we only wish we had something to throw on there we had no no meats or nothing so but it'll be fine it'll keep us warm and uh, we'll go ahead and call it a night and we'll see you tomorrow morning as we continue the trip up the Oregon coast